Right, hello ladies and gents, welcome to this tutorial on how to apply a noise gate in BandLab Cakewalk. This is uh, part of the initial stage of audio processing that you do after normalizing and organizing all your tracks. And you do this as part of a combination of processes, including EQ, gates, as I'm about to show you, and compression. They don't have to be done in that order. You'll find that one uh, influences the other, and sometimes you have to do EQ first, sometimes gate first. Quite often compression does come last out of those three, but I'm just going to show you gate for now so you get a hang of it. It's one of the more complicated ones, but it's very useful, particularly for live recording where you've got a lot of bleed. Uh, what I mean by bleed is where you're getting a spill from a different sound source on the track you've recorded with a microphone. So for instance, if you're recording a vocal and for some reason you've got some rubbish for headphones on and you pick up that that sound, that's called bleed. It's most common when you're recording drums. In fact, it's virtually unavoidable. Obviously, the better the studio and the better the mics you've got, then the more separation you're going to get with the drums. But I don't think there's an instance where you'll ever be able to record a drum kit and not hear something of the other drums on each of the mics. So this is a college project. It's the first recording that these guys have done, and I'm very impressed with it. They've done really well. It's not the best studio. It's really good for a college, but it's not fully soundproof. We haven't got the best equipment in the world, but we do very well so because of that resulted in possibly a bit more bleed on these drum tracks and you might get say at a really big expensive studio like Abbey Road or something. Now the first thing about applying any kind of process in Cakewalk and this is a problem I keep coming up against is making sure that you're selecting the right track because it's very easy to be working away think you're working on a track when you're not so make sure that you've got the actual track is highlighted as well as the audio selected and you see in the inspector the name of the track at the bottom a number of times i've been doing stuff and tearing my hair out why isn't this eq working oh wrong track all right so easily done so this is your inspector where you've got a whole range of different bits and pieces information about the track the first to the right the one with the potentiometer symbol there will show you a whole pile of ready plugged in processors and I could use some of these right now but what I'm going to do is use some more conventional ones from the plugins that come free with Cakewalk. You'll find them over here on the right hand side. Certainly in this layer, I'm, I'm in a Ranger layout by the way. Try different layouts and see what suits you. Uh, you may not see them straight away but uh, look for a little symbol which actually looks like a soldering iron. I don't know why it just does. Uh, there we go, you click on it and you have this menu of plugins. So a gate you will find under dynamics because it's a dynamic process it's all to do with levels so what exactly is a gate well just to dispel a myth a gate isn't a process to get rid of noise a lot of people think that's what its main purpose is but actually what happens is that a gate silences sound between signals it's great for drum kits so essentially the sound needs to be strong enough to be heard. If it's not strong enough, the gate doesn't open, you hear nothing. So there's gate closed, weak sounds don't get through, they get blocked. As soon as you get a sound that's strong enough, the gate opens and the sound comes through along with anything else that's been recorded. This is what I'm saying. It's not a way to get rid of noise entirely because if there's noise on the track, it will come through when the gate is open. And when that signal falls below a certain level again, gate shuts and it silences the track. So when you've got that kind of shuffle from the snare on your kick drum track, you can lose that shuffle, but just see boom, 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 boom. And all the shuffle in between is cut out. So I've soloed the kick drum track. I've made sure I've got it selected. I'm going to go to dynamics and I'm going to start a, an effects chain over here with the Sonitus gate, which is, comes free with BandLab Cakewalk. This is what it looks like when you first put it on. Very conventional. It looks very professional. It's got all the standard controls you would expect. And the first things we need to learn about, I know it looks like a complete mess of buttons and lights and panels and stuff. And oh, where do you start? But this is where you start over here with the threshold. Threshold is where you tell the processor at what point you want the gate to open. At what point in the signal chain, at what level should the gate be pushed open? So at moments on minus 60, it's going to let everything through. Anything over minus 60 and above, it's going to let through. The next one, which is really important, is depth. And depth is how much the gate is going to be closed when it's closed, i.e. infinity means infinitely closed. It will not let a single thing through. This particular gate allows you to actually change that so you can use it for different effects. Quite useful for patterns and pulses and that sort of thing. 
we're going to use this as to silence the stuff between kick drums so we want it on infinite depth it has actually got a bit of eq here and you can use that if you've got a situation where maybe the kick and the snare on the kick drum mic are, are too much the same level you can actually shave off some of the tone of the snare drum to make it less impactful and easier to gate uh, may well try that uh, and then you've got down here the envelope of how the gate opens and closes so the attack is how quickly the gate opens now with a bass drum it's percussive you want to open straight away you don't otherwise it's going to be instead of boom 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 it's going to be vroom 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 but obviously you can use that attack for effect on other types of sounds uh, hold is how long you want to hold the gate open for you just set milliseconds i don't use that very much usually i prefer to just use the release and the release is when will the gate close after the signal has fallen below threshold again and in this case it's set to 200 milliseconds as soon as the uh, signal goes lower than the threshold i've set then the gate closes again and look ahead is basically allows the software to look ahead and make a better judgment on what's coming up and therefore have better quality gating but it takes more cpu power so keep it low on uh, low powered laptops uh, this laptop is now a bit better than the last one i was given so it can handle a bit more those are all the essential controls there are two other bits and pieces you don't know, don't need to know about them don't use presets because every single situation with a gate is unique okay, let's press play so at the moment it's not actually doing much because We've got the minus 60 threshold and you can hear the the shuffle the snare boom, boom, tsh, tsh, boom, tsh, boom, boom, tsh, tsh. so i want to try and get rid of that snare sound first thing i'm going to do is take a little bit of the top end off because it's mainly basis kick although it's got the click on it as well where the beater hits the skin don't lose that but this will reduce the impact slightly the snare in the mix then what i'm going to do i'm just going to raise the threshold up towards the peaks that the kick drummer's making and there we go i've more or less isolated the kick drum already and lost that snare attack i want it really quick but too quick you get this kind of clicky sound so two or three milliseconds is probably ideal for this kind of sound softens the cushions it ever so slightly now just to prove a point at the moment it's a 200 millisecond closure after the signal falls below this threshold here if i increase that you'll start hearing the snare again Okay, because it's been forced to stay open longer. But I don't want to lose the, f the ring of the kick. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to increase the look ahead, allow it to make a more effective decisions. And there we've, there I've managed to isolate the kick drum. Okay, so that's how gates work. Practice fiddle around with these controls and um, hopefully you'll be able to isolate all your drums in your recording by doing this thanks for watching